So, Karen, you cover Caterpillar very closely. As I say, they've been up and up. They've taken up their profits estimates. It looks like they beat again on earnings per share. Yeah, um, I don't think people will be surprised that they beat. Um, I, you know, will they raise is another question because we're going to have some margin issues. They already had material uh, cost they problems. Did. They, they, yeah. they did wind up raising. So the full okay. year adjusted earnings on the high end, they now see $12 versus well, 11 25 So okay. it's a pretty substantial uh, raise for them, no? Uh, so the, uh, the volumes are up over 25% and they're up across every region and they're up across every product line. So, and CAT is a volume driven company. The issue is they've got some big cost problems. Um, steel's up over 20 percent the tariffs are gonna are an issue I mean that's the stuff and China those are the three things people will probably talk about on the call. On the cost issue Karen is there a lag between the time yes. that the tariffs get imposed and actually start to show up in their earnings so yes. could this be a second half issue as opposed to 2019? Uh, it'll start showing up probably at the end of the third quarter, fourth quarter, uh, you know, three to six months after. Um, you know, people are already seeing cost issues, right, with material costs up a lot. That's probably where the pressure is going to come the most for them, although the fears are that there'll be a, a, a broad uh, global war. All of their China uh, equipment they make in China. Uh, so, you know, it's a domestic business for them, but they will have an impact on the cost side. But even apart from whether, in fact, tariffs get imposed or what happens, does the uncertainty surrounding the trade situation potentially cause companies to put off some of the big investments they would otherwise make in this uh, earth-moving equipment? I, I, I think there is a risk of that, uh, but uh, you're, not, you're certainly not seeing it in the numbers. As long as commodity prices are strong, mm -hmm. and they are strong, I, there's a, a replacement argument, particularly on the mining side. There's, there were four down years in mining equipment, yeah. so there's some catch-up to be had. Uh, are we going to be looking at something similar to the auto companies where you have global macro uncertainty but on an idiosyncratic basis we're going to really be able to determine the winners and the losers in the industrials? Uh, I, I, well, the first pass is everything gets hit, right? And you yeah. saw that in the in the numbers. And CAT is a bellwether for global trade, and uh, you know, so there will I think there will be some differentiation. The the um, conglomerates, the multi industrials, uh, you know, probably less impact. People are looking at the real steel heavy, you know, um, equipment type companies. So there are some uncertainties both on the cost side as well as on the revenue side. At the same time, they had a long period. It was a dark period for Caterpillar. To what extent did their retrench? on their cost side really position them to take advantage of the uptick because they had to take some pretty drastic issues on cost cutting. Oh, they've cut billions out of structural costs and the, the incremental leverage that they're seeing on this volume is much higher than historical because of all the costs they've cut. And they're going to be cautious about bringing it back. Um, but there's some things they can't really do much about like the steel prices.